in today's lecture we are going to start from where we left in the last lecture that was the problem solving we will solve one or two problems and then we will learn some new concepts on chords and uh, diameters. Okay. So, I hope you are enjoying the lectures if you are liking the lectures please share the feedback on app also if you do not like the lectures then also share the feedback and if you have any doubts anytime you can always post on the app we are always there in touch with you. Okay. Shall we start? So, this problem we solved uh, this problem also we solved and suppose uh, let us say this is a problem where we want to find the center of the ellipse. Okay. So, when we want to find the center of the ellipse what is the method, but if it is a standard form then you know how to do deal with that, but here this is in the general form. <coughs> So, to find the center of a conic which is in the general form of second degree equation there are two methods. One method is about using the partial derivatives the other method is about using the shifting of the origin. So, let us say we do this by partial derivatives. So, how do we do that if we take this uh, expression as let us say s let us say we take this expression as s we can of course, write it as s equal to 0. Okay. So, what will be dou s by dou x dou s by dou x that means derivative of the entire expression with respect to only x. So, when we are differentiating with respect to only x that means y and all terms involving y are also constants along with the constant. Okay. So, put dou s by dou x equal to 0, put dou s by dou y equal to 0 and solve these two that will give you the center of the conic. Okay. Now, what are the conics which have centers? One is ellipse, one is hyperbola, the other could be circle also, but there is also one more which is pair of straight lines. Pair of straight lines is also a conic which has center which is also the point of intersection of the POSL. Okay. So, this method can be used to find the center. So, let us quickly solve the problem. <coughs> Derivative here is 2 x here 2 y and here this term becomes 0. Derivative of minus 2 x is minus 2 equal to 0. This is my first equation. Now, second one. So, derivative of x square with respect to y becomes 0. So, here we get uh, uh, 2 x and here we get 8 y here we get minus 8 equal to 0. If we solve these two, we will get the point of intersection. Now, let us solve these two. So, there is 2 x here. So, if I just subtract 1, we will get the uh, solutions. So, here we get uh, 6 y minus 6 equal to 0. So, which means y is equal to 1. So, if I put y equal to 1, I will get x equal to 0. So, uh, then center of the conic is 0 to 1 uh, 0 comma 1. Okay. So, this is one faster method, but there is one slower method, but which is having more conceptual significance than this which is the shifting of origin. So, let us say there is this random ellipse somewhere like this. We do not know whether this way whether the ellipse is this way oriented or the other way oriented. It could be like this also, but we do not know what it is. So, let us take any one shape randomly and let us say the center is h comma k. Okay. So, if the center is h comma k and let us say our x axis is here and y axis is here this is the origin which is 0 0. Basically, we are going to shift origin to that point that means, this line will become new x axis this line will become new y axis. Okay. So, what is the transformation we use when we are shifting? So, here in place of x we put x plus h in place of y we put y plus k. Now, standard bookish notation is they use capital X here capital Y here, but it does not matter okay? because after you shift it this becomes your new x axis this becomes your new y axis. So, it does not matter. Okay? So, basically in this equation just use that transformation. So, what do we get here uh, x plus h whole square plus 
टू इंटू एक्स प्लस एच इंटू वाई प्लस के प्लस फोर इंटू वाई प्लस के होल स्क्वायर एंड नेक्स्ट माइनस टू इंटू एक्स प्लस एच माइनस एट इंटू वाई प्लस के प्लस थ्री इक्वल टू जीरो Now, when we are simplifying this, we know that h and k are constants, and the highest degrees, <coughs> highest degree that we get for x is two, for y is also two. There is also going to be x y term. There will be one x term. There will be one y term. There will be one constant term. So while simplifying, I'll collect only the terms that I want based on the powers. For example, I am looking for x square. So where do I get x square here? There is only one term which will give x square, which is coming from the first factor, so that is the x square, and there is only one term which is y square, which is coming from this third factor, which is going to be four y square. Now x y term is coming only from this factor, which is going to be two x y. In fact, this term you can blindly write because if you look at the earlier expression, these are the three terms which are of second degree; they repeat exactly. Okay, now the linear terms. So x into one x is provided by this term, which is going to be having one two a b term. A plus b whole square will have one one term, which is two a b. That term will give us x, so that is going to be two h. Similarly, here we will get x when we multiply this x with this constant and with this constant two. So it will be two into x into k. So that will be two k. Okay, now this term is not going to give any x. This will give one x, so which is going to be minus two. Okay, now plus I'll also write the y term. Okay, so here there will be one y term. For that we need this y, we need this constant, and we we need this coefficient. So two h y, so that is going to be two h, and from here the two a b term will give us one y term. So that will be 2y k into 4. So here we will write 8k, and again from here we will get one y term, so which is minus 8. Now the constant term. See if you notice, I have segregated all uh, second degree terms, then linear terms. Now the constant term. Now constant is very simple. Just put the point h comma k in this equation. That will be our constant term. This is the standard format of the equation. If you know the format. Even though question is very lengthy, you can crack it very easily because you can graphically understand that these are some segment, these are some segment, these are some segment. Okay, so here I just have to put this point. So what do I get? H square plus two H K plus K square plus uh, not plus it is minus minus two H minus eight K plus three. This is equal to zero. This is the new equation of the uh, ellipse after we shift it, shift the origin. Now, when we shift the origin to the center, we have learned this in the earlier lecture that x term and y term must be absent if the center of the conic is origin. So that means this term, which is the coefficient of x, must be. Oh shit. So it's now completely gone. So I'll just simplify this. Okay. So I'll just write this one more time. Okay. So we got x square plus two x y plus four y square, and plus we got one x term, uh, which was two h plus two k minus two, and we got one y term, which was 2h plus 8k minus 8, and then we got one constant term, which was h square plus 2hk plus 4k square minus 2h minus 8k plus 3. Okay, very nice. I just remembered it. Okay, so now this is the term. Okay, so now because the center is origin, the x term has to be absent. Y term also has to be absent. So which means. Here I am marking that in red. So this term has to be zero. This term also has to be zero. So when we put these two 
टू एच प्लस टू के माइनस टू इक्वल टू जीरो एंड टू एच प्लस एट के माइनस एट इक्वल टू जीरो वेन वी पुट दीज टू टूगेदर एंड सॉल्व फॉर एच एंड के यू आर बेसिकली सॉल्विंग दीज टू इक्वेशन ओके सो इफ यू नोटिस दीज टू इक्वेशन आर नथिंग बट दीज टू इक्वेशन सो इफ यू आस्क मी वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दोज पार्शियल डेरेवेटिव आई से दैट दीज पार्शियल डेरेवेटिव इक्वेशन आर नथिंग बट द कोफिशेंट्स ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई वेन वी शिफ्ट द ऑरिजिन ओके सो वेन वी सॉल्व दीज टू वी आर गोइंग टू गेट द सेंटर ऑफ द कॉनिक दिस इज द मेथड नव वेन दीज टू टर्म्स बिकम जीरो एंड ऑफकोर्स दिस टर्म हैज बिकम ए नंबर बिकॉज आफ्टर वी सॉल्व फॉर एच एंड के वी गॉट द पॉइंट हियर विच इज जीरो कॉमा वन so when we put 0 comma 1 in this this is going to be a single constant so how will the equation look like equation looks like this ax square plus 2hxy plus by square plus some constant some c dash equal to 0 so this equation always represents a ellipse or hyperbola which is having center at origin but axes of the conic are not parallel to coordinate axis there it could be a tilted ellipse or hyperbola okay so that is the general knowledge that we have gained by solving this problem okay so basically we have solved a problem solving is not an issue learning the methods is an issue okay so in lectures you do not go for the shortcuts but learn the methods okay so quickly take snapshots of these two pages also this page okay so now we'll move on to the next question so here in an ellipse with coordinate axis uh, this condition is satisfied this condition was also satisfied and p is on the ellipse so in fact this statement is not required because the moment we make these two statements it means p is already naturally on the ellipse by property so we don't have to say that p lies on ellipse of course p is on ellipse and if the center of this in center of this lies on this line find the eccentric angle so we want to find coordinates of in center and satisfy this equation with that coordinates and then find the angle p okay so if we want to find the eccentric angle we have to start with p being a cos theta b sin theta and we have to do it but before that please note that uh, <coughs> 2x minus 1 equal to 0 is the line on which the in center lie that means x coordinate must be 1 by 2 so we are interested only in the x coordinate okay so what is the formula of in center formula of in center goes like this ax1 plus bx2 plus cx3 by a plus b plus c what are these a plus b plus c suppose if there is a triangle abc and a has coordinates x1 comma y1 b has coordinates x2 comma y2 c has coordinates x3 comma y3 and this side is a this side is b this side is c then equation then the coordinates of in center will look like this similarly there will be one y coordinate but we are interested only in x coordinate so this is the method let's apply the method quickly now we have one ellipse here there are two foci here let's say this is s this is s dash let's take this as a e comma 0 take this as Minus a comma zero, and this is the point P, and this is the triangle P S S dash. Okay, uh, so here we want to find the in center. We know this side, which is the S S dash, which is going to be two A E. Now, what about P S and P S dash? We know the formula for focal length. What is the formula? It is a minus x one into E for P. Uh, for s and for s dash it will be with plus sign so if i put x1 as a cos theta b sin theta so what do i get this side to be this side will come out to be 1 minus e cos theta into a and this side will come out to be a into 1 plus e cos theta suppose if this point p comes this side then cos theta will become negative because theta becomes obtuse angle then naturally this becomes a positive value this becomes a negative uh, this becomes smaller value this becomes bigger value that is naturally taken care with the sign okay so now we want to find the in center so what is the formula for in center let us just apply it 
So, here <coughs> 2 a e which is this side into the x coordinate which is a cos theta plus this side length into x coordinate here. So, a into 1 minus e cos theta into what is the x coordinate here minus a e plus similarly this side length into x coordinate here a into 1 plus e cos theta into plus a e divided by we should be adding all three sides. So, 2 a e here uh, a into 1 plus e cos theta plus a into 1 minus e cos theta. Now, in the denominator if you notice a into e cos theta is getting cancelled. So, what are we getting in the denominator? We are getting 2 a e plus 2 a. What about numerator? Here if you notice a is coming twice and e is also coming once. So, we can take a square e as common in the numerator. So, if I take a square into e as common. So, what am I left with? Here 2 cos theta and here a e and a are taken common. So, it becomes minus 1 plus e cos theta. Similarly, here also it is the same thing. It becomes 1 plus e cos theta. So, what are the terms that are getting cancelled here? 1 is getting cancelled and if I take 2 cos theta common in the numerator, if I take 2 cos theta common, I am getting e plus 1 and in the denominator, if I take 2 a common, I am getting 1 plus e very beautiful e plus 1 got cancelled that is our luck and 1 a is also getting cancelled here. Okay. So, we got some uh, expression here 2 is also getting cancelled. So, we got an expression like a e cos theta this must be equal to 1 by 2. Now, we want to solve for theta, but we have to somehow use the information a e. So, here I solve this problem in a generic way. Okay but I have not put the values. Now, I will put the values. Now, what is the distance between 2 foci? It is 2 units. Uh, here, it must be s dash into p. Okay. So, uh, 2a is 4 units, 2a is 4 units and 2a is 2 units. So, this gives us a e equal to 1. So, that means here we can just put 1. So, this implies cos theta must be 1 by 2. And what is the domain and uh, domain of theta? It varies from 0 to 2 pi. So, from 0 to 360, what are the angles which will satisfy this condition? There is one angle which is 60 degrees and there is one angle which is 360 minus 60 degrees which is 300 degrees. So, these are basically the angles that are required. Okay. Can we move on now? Quickly take a snapshot of this. Okay, next, find the foci directrices and uh, lengths of lattice rectum of this ellipse. So, this is the other version of the general ellipse that we handled earlier in the last lecture. Okay. So, here I have given you this uh, explanation of let us say there is one line and there is another line and these two are perpendicular and if there is one point here p which is satisfying this condition this perpendicular distance are let us say d 1 and d 2 and we have d 1 square by a square plus d 2 square by b square is equal to 1. If this is satisfied, then locus of p is an ellipse and here if a is greater than b, if a is greater than b, then that means the distance, <coughs> the distance from the line which is d 2 which has the lower value will become the major axis. So, this becomes the major axis. So, here we have to think in reverse manner, whichever has the highest value in the denominator will become the minor axis. Okay. So, here this line will become minor axis, this is the thumb rule. Now, let us use it here. So, to use it there, we have to convert these two lines into distances. So, how do we do that? we write it as x plus y minus 2 by root 2 whole square. This becomes d 1 square, but we have actually taken one 2 extra. So, we have to split 8 into 2 into 4. So, this becomes 4 here plus sim in similar way when we simplify the second term, 
it becomes this term. Okay. So, now it looks like d 1 square by 4 plus d 2 square by 1 equal to 1. Now, let us plot these lines. Okay. So, where would these lines be? So, let us say this is my y axis, this is my x axis, x minus y by root 2 equal to 0 that will give me x equal to y line. So, let us say this is my one line and the other line is going to be x plus y minus 2 equal to 0. So, that will be a line like this. Okay. And the point of intersection becomes the center that is fine. And out of these two which is bigger 4 is bigger. So, x minus y line becomes the major axis this is the major axis. So, this becomes the minor axis. Okay. And what is the value of a? a becomes 2. What is the value of b? b becomes 1. From here, we can also calculate e. e becomes uh, root of 1 minus b square by a square, which is root of 3 by 2. a is clear. Also, we can calculate a e. a e becomes root 3. What about a by e? a by e becomes 2 by root 3 by 2, which is same as 4 by root 3. So, we got all characteristics ready. Now, we will attack the question. So, if I find the point of intersection, it becomes my center. Okay. So, what is the point of intersection here? Uh, this line is x equal to y and this line is x plus y equal to 2. So, if I put x equal to y here, I will get 1 comma 1. So, 1 comma 1 is the center. Now, what about focus s? So, from here to here distance is going to be a e okay? and other focus will lie somewhere here. So, from here to here distance is also going to be a e and uh, this is just the direction I have tentatively written the point here. We do not know exactly where the point is lying. This point could be in the first quadrant also we do not know that, but if you want to find these coordinates in a simple manner what is the best way to go for the parametric form of straight line. So, if we take the slope of this straight line which is the major axis that is going to be 1. Now, from here if I want to find a point which is at a distance of r what is the formula that we use x 1 plus r cos theta y 1 plus r sin theta that is what the formula that we use here. So, here for s we can write a formula like this for s 1 plus a e into cos theta comma 1 plus a e into sin theta. Now, when I am applying <coughs> when I am applying cos theta and sin theta there could be sometimes plus minus signs confusion also. So, how to deal with this confusion of cos theta and sin theta being positive or negative. So, just imagine from this point if we are going in this direction this direction is towards the first quadrant even though the point is in or not in the first quadrant, whether it is in or not in the first quadrant, because we are going in the direction of the first quadrant cos theta and sin theta must be positive. Similarly, when I am calculating s dash, even though s dash is in the third quadrant or not, let us say even if it is in the first quadrant, because this direction is towards the third quadrant, we take cos theta and sin theta negative. Suppose, let us say similarly from here if you are going in this direction, even if our point comes here, because our direction is pointing towards second quadrant, we take sin positive and cos negative. Okay. So, this way we can deal with the sin confusion. Okay. So, now what to, what could be the values of sin theta and cos theta? Because we are going in this direction, we have to take cos theta to be 1 by root 2 and sin theta to be 1 by root 2. So, if I just put them here, what do I get? We already have value for a e also. What is the value of a e? Root 3. So, root 3 by root 2, this is my x coordinate and 1 plus root 3 by root, uh, root 2 is also going to be my y coordinate because it is on the line y equal to x. So, even if you get one coordinate, it is enough to get the point. So, this way we calculated s. What about s dash? It will just carry the negative sign. So, s dash can be written as with the same sign. Okay. So, s and s dash can be written with plus minus signs here. 
Okay, so it is actually wrong to put plus minus, we will put, we should put plus minus only if both are allowed. So, if I write plus minus there, that means there are total 4 possibilities here. Okay. So, 4 possibilities are not allowed. So, we write s dash separately. Okay. So, 1 minus root 3 by root 2, comma 1 minus root 3 by root 2, this is going to be my s dash. Okay. So, I calculated foci. Now, length of lattice rectum is actually very simple task. It is going to be lattice rectum is going to be how much? 2b square by a. So, b square is 1, a is 2. So, this becomes 1. So, length of lattice rectum is 1 unit. We have just calculated this. Now, we need directrices. Now, what is the best way to find the directrices? So, to calculate directrices, there are two methods. One is let us assume that directrix is somewhere here. So, this becomes the foot of the directrix. By using the same idea, we get the foot of the directrix and then using this slope, slope of the minor axis because minor axis and directrix are going to be parallel. Using this slope, we can get that line. This is one way. Similarly, we can also get the other directrix. So, the second way could be we know that the distance between these two minor axis and the directrix is going to be a by e. So, directly find out a parallel line from this line which will have a distance a by e. So, in a way we can say that any line parallel to this can be written as x plus y plus c equal to 0 and we know that distance between these two must be a by e. So, that means c uh, plus 2 divided by root of 1 square plus 1 square whole mod, this must be equal to a by e. Now, how did I calculate that? You know that mod of c1 minus c2 by root of a square plus b square gives the distance between parallel lines. I use that idea here. Okay. So, here we are getting mod of c plus 2 is equal to what is a by e? We got it as 4 by root 3, correct? Yes. So, it is 4 by root 3 into root 2. So, basically c becomes minus 2 plus minus 4 root 2 by root 3. So, if I just put it in this equation, for plus sign I will get one directrix, for minus sign I will get the other directrix. Okay? So, you can use either method. Either you calculate this foot of the directrix and then the line or you directly use the distance between parallel lines and get the directrices. This way we can calculate directrices. Okay? So, with this we complete the analysis of general equation of ellipse, where in earlier case, in the last lecture, if center and directrix or center and focus were given, we calculated the equation of ellipse using this idea only, this idea. And now, we are with a given equation, we are calculating the points with the same idea. Okay? So, this completes the method. There is also one more slight glitch. For that also we have one more question which will deal with the other glitch. Okay? So, quickly make a note of this. <coughs> also this page. So, next problem, find the characteristics of the ellipse. Now, what become the characteristics of ellipse? Let us look at the earlier question. So, here what are the main characteristics of this ellipse which will not change even if ellipse is oriented in a different way? Which are these? Distance between center and focus is A e, this is characteristic. Distance between uh, minor axis and directrix is <coughs> a by e and imagine uh, sorry <coughs> minor axis is b major axis is a these are the characteristics okay so in general when i look at any equation like this and if i am interested in the characteristics so what are the things that i am actually looking for i am looking for a b and e okay these are the main things now here 
A, B and E are also directly, directly linked. So, even if I calculate just A and B, I can just get E. So, basically out of these three, only two are independent. So, let us look only for any two independent characteristics here. Okay. So, my goal is going to be to calculate A and B here. Okay. So, how do I calculate A and B? For that, imagine the earlier question that we have solved about finding the center of the conic. Okay. So, how do we find center of the conic? We differentiated partially and we found the center. Right. So, if you look at the other method, if you simply observe the other method, what was the other method? It was to substitute h, h, uh, x plus h in place of x, y plus k in place of y and simplify this. In that we get one second degree equation and one linear terms, second degree terms, linear terms and then constant terms. So, linear terms were put to be 0 because the center was origin because we shifted it, you remember. So, let us apply the same idea here and simplify this. Okay. So, when I substitute h, uh, x plus h and y plus k, what will the uh, required terms be? The second degree terms will become 13 x square plus 10 x y plus 13 y square. Okay. And now, there will be some linear terms, but I do not have to worry about the linear terms because they are anyways going to be 0 and plus there will be one constant term. How do I calculate this constant? Just remember earlier case, this is the beauty of smart board because we have everything here, we can just revisit and observe. See, this was the point, right? When we substitute this point in this, that means basically h comma k, in this term, this is going to give me the constant and these two terms are anyways going to be zeros. Okay? So, only this term will give the constant term. So, that means whatever is the point of intersection, uh, point, uh, point which is the center here, if I substitute that point here, I will get the constant. Okay? So, how do I get that? By finding the center and substituting. Now, how do we find the center? By using the partial derivatives. See, we are actually clubbing both methods here because that way it is faster. Okay? So, let me just find the partial derivatives here or just expand the terms and observe. Okay? So, you know how to do that. So, if I find the partial derivatives, I will get 26 x plus 10 y plus 26 equal to 0 and the next one 10 x plus 26 y and plus 10 equal to 0. So, here uh, we want to solve these two linear equations, but there is some beauty that we can observe sum of coefficients here, sum of coefficients here, sum of coefficients here are actually equal. So, if I just add these two, I get 36 common and I will get x plus y plus 1 equal to 0. So, keep always, uh, you know, be alert and keep always looking for pattern like this. So, once if we find this pattern, just remove this 36 and we got a relation like this. Now, directly solve with any of it. So, just multiply with 10 and subtract from the second equation. So, what do we get here? 26 minus 10 will become 16 y and here 10 minus 10 becomes 0. Okay, very beautiful. y equal to 0 is a solution. Okay. Is this clear? So, if y is 0, I will get x to be minus 1. So, that means just put these two values to get the constant. So, what do I get? Uh, 13 plus 0 plus 0 minus 26 minus 59. This is going to be my constant. So, my 113 will get cancelled. So, 59 plus 32 is 72. So, minus 72. So, this constant is minus 72. Okay. So, basically using this shifting technique, we simplified the equation into this form and where this is a conic with center as the origin. Now, how do we find out A and B? To calculate A and B, first listen to this idea. Now, ellipse is a, uh, a curve. <coughs> now, ellipse is going to have the center as the origin. Okay. 
Okay, so ellipse is a curve centered around origin now. Now from this, let us say I join all points like this. So these can be taken as the radii, okay, central radii, radius vector. Okay. Now out of these radii, the maximum radius will be for the semi major axis, the minimum radius will be for the semi minor axis. We know this idea. Okay. So, what we do is we take any one radius, let us say to be r and we take this angle as let us say theta. So, using the polar coordinates, we can write this point as r cos theta comma r sin theta. Okay. Now, r is varying, theta is also varying, theta is varying between 0 and 2 pi, r is varying between a and b. A is the maximum value for r and b is the minimum value for r. b is the semi, major, semi minor axis and a is the semi major axis. We understood this idea. Now, if we have understood this, let us now look at the algebra. So, in place of x, let me substitute r cos theta, in place of y, let me substitute r sin theta. So, what do I get here? See, from here, we are actually using a different idea. So, I am also using different color. Okay. So, 13 r square into cos square theta, 10 into r square into cos theta into sin theta plus 13 r square into sin square theta is equal to 72. Now, if I take r square common, what do I get? 72 divided by 13 into cos square theta plus sin square theta uh, plus 10 cos theta into sin theta. Now, further if I simplify this little bit, I get 72 by 13 plus phi into sin 2 theta. Okay. I hope you have understood what I have done here cos square plus sin square is 1 and 2 sin theta cos theta is sin 2 theta. So, I got an expression for r square, I will take it to this page, 72 by 13 plus phi into sin 2 theta. Now, let us look at this expression for r square which is algebra and let us look at this geometry and see what we can conclude sin 2 theta is varying because theta is varying between 0 to 2 pi, but we know that sin 2 theta is belonging to minus 1 to 1. Now, based on this variation, if I can get one maximum value for r, it becomes my semi major axis. Based on this variation, if I can get one minimum value for r, it becomes my semi minor axis. So, what I will do is, I will try to find out the maximum and minimum values here. Okay. So, r max square, this we will get when we take sin 2 theta to be minimum, because whenever denominator is minimum, our overall value becomes maximum. Whenever denominator is maximum, overall value becomes minimum. So, for r max, we have to take sin 2 theta to be minus 1. So, this becomes 72 by 13 plus phi into minus 1, which is like 72 divided by 8, which is 9. This is my a square. Okay. Similarly, what will be r minimum square? It becomes 72 by 13 plus phi into 1, which is 72 by 18, which becomes 4. So, this 4 is going to be my b square. Okay. So, this is the a semi major axis is 3 and semi minor axis is 2. So, using this we can also get e. What will e come out to be here? Uh, it will become <coughs> root 5 by 3. Okay. But you have understood how we proceeded with this step. Okay. So, here algebraically we have not done much. But every step we are writing, every equation we are writing in coordinate geometry as an algebra is actually having a different meaning in coordinate geometry. So, now that is the beauty of coordinate geometry. The coordinate geometry entire subject itself is using algebra to simplify geometry. Okay. 
So, when you are writing every step, you have to understand meaning of that step. Okay. So, here I have explained the meaning completely and also I have solved the problem completely. Okay. So, I hope you have liked this solution. So, definitely take some snapshots, we will move on to the next idea. This page also. Okay, next. See, there could be some shortcuts here. In in many books or many uh, teachers also teach you lot of shortcuts involving differentiation, integration, and all. But those are not going to help you in the long run. Okay, so there are no shortcuts to success. What is the main crux of the success? It is the hard work and there are only methods, there are no shortcuts, there are no tricks in mathematics, there are only methods. Okay. Next, if the chord p q subtends a right angle at the center c of uh, this ellipse, show that this condition is uh, valid. Okay. So, here to solve this problem, we can do it in two styles. Okay. One style is we can take this point as h comma k. Okay. Then the other end can be calculated using h comma k. This center is 0, 0. The other end can be calculated using h comma k and uh, this is let us say p, this is let us say q, this is the center c. So, when we substitute this, when we find out this 1 by c p square plus 1 by c q square, definitely it will give you this value. This is one way. The other way could be to write p in terms of parametric form and then get q in terms of theta only and then simplify it. Okay. So, these are two ways of solving this problem. Okay. So, I will try to solve it using one way, you can also try it using the other way, it does not matter which method you choose. Okay. So, I will take this the hardest form which is using h comma k, I will leave taking a cos theta b sin theta for you, okay. but the process becomes same, process is same for both of them. Okay. So, suppose let us say, because the h comma k point is on the ellipse, so it has to satisfy the ellipse. So, but you remember that in ellipse, whenever in ellipse and hyperbola, whenever you are solving any problem, the algebra looks big but that is fine with it, that is the problem with the coordinate geometry, we have to accept the problem and we have to deal with it. Okay. So, algebra is going to be long, but we have to be patient and we have to solve them. But number of steps wise it will be less only, but each expression is a big expression, so it looks big. Okay. Now, slope of this line is going to be k by h, because, because it is passing through origin, y coordinate by x coordinate is the slope what about slope of this line? <coughs> because these two are already perpendicular, so it becomes minus h by k. So, minus h by k is the slope. Now, what about the equ oh, equation of this line? It will be y by x equal to m. Now, from here, I will get y to be equal to minus x h by k. If I substitute it in the ellipse, I can get the points. Okay. So, let us say this point is x 1 comma y 1. So, that means if I substitute it there in the ellipse, so what do I get? x 1 square by a square okay, plus uh, here x 1 square h square by k square into b square is equal to 1. So, from here I will get x 1 square. Okay. So, x 1 square will become equal to, what do we get here? 1 by uh, k square by a square plus h square by b square and k square will go up. This is what we get for x 1 square. Similarly, after we got x 1, if we solve for y 1 square, because in coordinate there is that symmetry. Okay. So, here when I am solving for x 1 square, see here, here h and k has one beautiful form and in the numerator there is k square. So, you can guess for what happens for y 1. Okay. So, for y 1 square, it is going to be 
it is square by same pattern it has to follow ok k square by a square plus h square by b square. Now, we are interested in 1 by c p square plus 1 by c q square ok. So, what would it become? c p square is basically h square plus k square <coughs> and c q square is going to be x 1 square plus y 1 square which is going to be same as h square plus k square divided by this denominator ok which is k square by a square plus h square by b square. Now, we are basically taking reciprocals of these two. Then what happens? h square plus k square comes in the denominator, but this c p square has 1 in the denominator. Okay? So, this 1 comes in the numerator, but for this 1 we can use this idea. Okay? So, basically 1 by c p square plus 1 by c q square becomes 1 by uh, h square plus k square plus uh, here we got k square by a square right yes k square by a square plus h square by b square divided by we got h square plus k square. But we are going to write this one as this term. So, this one becomes h square by a a square plus k square by b square. Now, if you notice, if I take 1 by a square common, see what happens? We get h square plus k square and similarly, if I take 1 by b square common, I will get h square plus k square and h square plus k square is getting cancelled. So, basically, we are left with this 1 by a square plus 1 by b square only. Okay. So, this way we can calculate this problem. Okay. So, any confusion here? So, basically here if you observe, okay, here if you observe 1 by c p square plus 1 by c q square, you want to prove this and we have proved it using this idea h comma k, this is one idea. Second is you can also take the p point as a cos theta comma b sin theta and start the process and do it in the same style. Okay. Now, just copy this, I will give you one better shortcut. Okay, so this page also. Okay. So, better shortcut is this. <coughs> I will just remove uh, everything here, no we do not have to, this is enough. Suppose let us say we have one ellipse here and this chord P q is actually making 90 degrees at the center and if this property is valid, it must be valid for all chords which are making 90 degrees. Okay. So, that means I can also take one chord which is actually joining the ends of minor axis and the major axis. This is also is making 90 degrees here and we know that this length is A, this length is B okay. and we know that this perpendicular is let us say P. So, we have this formula that 1 by P square equal to 1 by A square plus 1 by B square. This is a standard rule of right angle triangles, we know this theorem. Now, let us try to compare this with the other chord which is this. So, from here if I draw one perpendicular, this becomes perpendicular let us say p and this 1 by p square must be equal to 1 by c p square plus 1 by c q square. So, basically that is exactly the same thing that we have done here. So, this also must be equal to this. Okay. So, this way we can actually prove this. Okay. Now, the other idea. From here, we are also getting one confirmation that all the chords which are subtending right angle at the center are at a constant distance from the center. So, no matter which chord you take, whether this is this chord or any chord like this which is making 90 degrees at the center, 
all of them are having the same distance from the center. So, that means the locus of the foot of perpendicular drawn from center to any chord which is making 90 degrees at the center will become one circle. Okay. So, this also you can observe using pure geometry. Okay. So, this is one idea to explore. Okay. So, I hope you are liking these ideas. Okay. So, definitely make a note of this, we will move on to the next idea. Okay. So, next concept is about chord. Okay. So, we could not get much time for a chord, we are only having roughly 10 to 15 minutes left, but we will try to finish as much as possible about chords and we will continue at this point in the next lecture. Okay. So, here equation of chord of the ellipse, if midpoint is given, it is S1 equal to S11 and this is standard form which is valid for all curves including the pair of straight lines. Even in pair of straight lines, if these are the pair of straight lines and if the equation is L1, L2 equal to 0 and this is my S equal to 0. So, if you want to find any line uh, with this midpoint, let us say it is 1 comma 2 or something, if you want to find the equation of the line through passing through 1 comma 2 which is bisected exactly at 1 comma 2, then we can also apply the same idea to get that equation of intersecting line. Okay. So, this chord uh, idea of this chord using midpoint can be applied for any curves of second degree which includes pair of straight lines also. Okay. Next, if two points are on the curve x1, y1, x2, y2 are on the curve, then equation of chord can be calculated using this idea s1 plus s2 equal to s12. Okay. So, this is also one of the standard ideas which is valid for all curves. Okay. Next, equation of chord with alpha and beta as the parametric uh, eccentric angles can be written in this way. Now, this can be calculated either by applying this idea S1 plus S2 equal to S12 or directly by using two point form and calculating this. Okay. So, if you are using two point form, be careful while simplifying the slope. Okay. So, because trigonometry is involved, a slight mistake can create a butterfly effect in your problem solving. So, be little careful when you are dealing with trigonometry. Okay. So, we can always take this as the equation of chord okay, with parametric form. And in fact, if you try to compare this with the equation of the uh, chord in parametric form with circle, the only difference is A equal to B in circle. That is the only difference. Rest all terms are same. So, in place of B, if you write A, you will get same chord of uh, circle. So, there is a direct connection between ellipse and circle also when it comes to this equation. So, it is easy to remember. Okay. Okay, next. Now, if the chord which is joining these two points, which are in the parametric form, passes through focus, then what could be the condition? So, here uh, let us take one focus A e comma 0. Okay. Now, what is the equation of chord we got here? This is the equation of chord. In this, in place of x, I am substituting A e, in place of y, I am substituting 0. So, what do I get here? When I put A e, A gets cancelled and E into cos alpha plus beta by 2 plus 0 equal to cos alpha minus beta by 2, which is precisely this step. Okay. Now, if we simplify this, we can further get this statement. So, how to get this statement? <coughs> For that, let us take E in the RHS and this in LHS. So, what do we get? Or take this in the RHS and keep E in the LHS only. So, it looks somewhat like this cos of alpha minus beta by 2 divided by cos of alpha plus beta by 2 is equal to E by 1. So, you know what we are going to apply here because the moment I wrote by 1 here, you are looking for a hint. It is componendo and dividendo. So, on this 
I will apply this idea. So, cos of alpha minus beta by 2 plus cos of alpha plus beta by 2. Okay, I can also do it the other way. So, I can apply the reciprocal of the component do. That means, this is dividend do and component do. Okay. So, it becomes cos of alpha uh, minus beta by 2 plus cos of alpha plus beta by 2. This becomes equal to what is the pattern that we followed here e minus 1 by e plus 1. Okay. Now, what do we get? This is one of the standard forms of trigonometry. So, cos a minus b minus cos a plus b, it gives us 2 sin a sin b. So, matlab 2, uh, so that means 2 sin alpha by 2 sin beta by 2 divided by cos a minus b plus cos a plus b, this will give us 2 cos a cos b this must be equal to e minus 1 by e plus 1. Now, see what happens, we are getting tan alpha by 2 into tan beta by 2 equal to e minus 1 by e plus 1, that is precisely the condition. Okay. So, this way we can derive the condition for focal chord, but this condition is only for a e comma 0. What about minus a e comma 0? It may change a bit, that you have to verify. Okay. So, that becomes your homework here, that is explore for the other focus, explore for minus a e comma 0 about what exactly happens to the condition. Okay. So, I hope you have understood this point. Also, there is also one more point about the chords here, that is the chord of contact, but because the, because you have not learned tangents yet, we have just chosen to skip it. So, suppose if this point is x1 comma y1 and if this point is A, this point is B, joining these two points, the equation of chord, that becomes the chord of contact and the equation is S1 equal to 0. So, you know this idea. Okay. Okay. So, now the next point, the locus of midpoints of parallel chords is called as the diameter of the whatever curve that we are talking about. So, in parabola also we have learned what is a diameter, it is basically locus of the midpoints of the uh, parallel chords. Now, how many parallel chords are we taking? Infinite parallel chords. When we are talking about system of parallel chords, it is also, uh, it also means family of parallel chords. Okay. So, now <coughs> let us look at this point in a more deeper way. Okay. So, let us say there is one ellipse here okay. and let us take some points which are uh, sorry, let us take some chords which are parallel. So, let us I have taken some chords here. Okay. Now, joining the midpoints of all these chords, I will get one line. Okay, a line like this, this line becomes the diameter. Now, in ellipse, all diameters have two fixed ends, okay, because they are ending on the ellipse only, but it is not necessarily true for all other curves. For example, for parabola, it is not true, only one end is fixed, other end is at infinity and all diameters are of infinite length for parabola and all diameters for parabola happen to be lines parallel to axis of the parabola, but here it is not like that. So, let us observe this algebraically. As I said, in coordinate geometry, every geometric interpretation has one algebraic interpretation. Every algebraic equation or condition has one geometric interpretation. So, let us look at this algebraically. Now, if I take slopes of all these blue chords as let us say m, because all are having same slope because they are all parallel chords. If we take slope as m and if I take the locus point as let us say h comma k, because this is the midpoint of that particular chord, I can write the equation of chord as 
x h by a square plus y k by b square minus 1 equal to h square by a square plus k square by b square minus 1. Now, this 1 is a constant whether it is cancelled or not it does not matter this term is also a constant. So, only these two, these two terms are the variable terms. Now, if I take the slope of the chord here, the slope becomes minus b square h by k a square, this is the slope. Now, because all these blue chords are having the same slope, which is m, so we can say that this is equal to m. Now, when we, when we are applying the idea of locus, we replace h with x and k with y. So, here it becomes minus b square x by a square m is equal to y. This becomes our equation of diameter. So, if chords are having slope m, this becomes our equation of diameter. Now, in this equation, you can observe that it looks like y equal to k into x, which means it is a line passing through the center. Here center is the origin, so it passes through center. So, what is the conclusion? If chords are having slope m, diameter can be written in this way and every diameter passes through center. On the other hand, every line that is passing through center is a diameter. Now, what is the largest diameter? major axis, what is the smallest diameter, minor axis. Okay. So, this way we can understand the basic idea of diameter. So, we have understood the definition of diameter, we derived an equation, we also understood the nature of the diameter. Okay. And after this, there is a concept called as conjugate diameters, this we will discuss in the next lecture. But concept of diameter could be in the syllabus of IIT but conjugate diameters is not in the syllabus of IIT, but still because these are borderline concepts, we touch all of them. Okay? So, we will start in the next lecture from this point and we will proceed with all concepts of chords and also, also some problem solving skills. Okay? So, we will meet again in the next lecture, until then have a great learning day, learning shall never stop.